you live from the Vegas Video Network Studios, just steps from the Las Vegas Strip, it's golf and other four-letter words. And now your host, you've heard him on ESPN, Fox Sports, and Sirius XM Radio, Mr. Dennis Silvers. Oh, hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Golf and Other Four-Letter Words. As previously introduced, I'm uh, your host, Dennis Silvers. Hoping that you're going to uh, hang with us for the next 30 minutes because we have just a fabulous, fabulous show in store for you in a lot of ways. Let me quickly uh, introduce our special guest for tonight. Uh, he's well known to a lot of golfers here locally in Southern Nevada. Helped a lot of golfers and other types of athletes here in Southern Nevada. Dr. Kevin Roby. Doc? Hey, thanks, Dennis. Give it up for Dr. Roby. Thank you. Thanks, Dennis. Uh, Kevin, let, let me ask you, what, uh, I, are you an OBGYN? Are you a cardiologist? I mean, what, what kind of doctor are you exactly? Well, uh, I'm a PhD. I'm a psychologist. Okay. And sometimes... But you're a smart guy. Well, you, you kind of got to be. Okay. But uh, sometimes you kind of got to do the work of a proctologist to help some of the uh, golf. Oh, that's there. interesting. All right. That's right. You got to make sure that they got all their parts in the right place. Okay. All right. Now, you uh, obviously, we're going to talk about your work with golfers, but you also work with uh, uh, another genre. I, I have no idea what that word means, but I love it. Another genre of athletes such as? Well, I work with a variety of athletes, a uh, uh, number of gymnasts, a uh, professional baseball player, a professional pool player, uh, now working with a tennis player, uh, work with a uh, long-distance runner. Mm -hmm. So a lot of different uh, sports. Professional pool player, that's interesting. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. yeah. That is very interesting. Yeah, they used to have this international uh, international pool, pool tour. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's still going on. I don't know. But yeah, he was one of the guys that qualified for it. It was a pretty select uh, group of people that were playing that's, in this, in this uh, worldwide tournament. That's very, very interesting. Well, we're going to be getting in depth with Dr. Roby a little bit later about just the kind of work he does uh, with golfers so. and, and again maybe touch on some other uh, athletes. We're going to give you his website. He's got a local practice uh, here in Las Vegas in case you want to get a hold of him. So uh, speaking about getting a hold of me, we've got a couple different ways okay. to get a, uh, get a hold of me or Dr. Roby on the show tonight. You can always send us an email as you guys have been very, very good in doing that. It's very simple. Golf at VegasVideoNetwork.com. Golf at VegasVideoNetwork.com. And for those of you that are more in the moment, we've got live chat, as you know. So you could shoot me a question. You could shoot the doctor a question, comments, thoughts, suggestions, anything. Simple, VegasVideoNetwork.com, VegasVideoNetwork.com. And do yourself a favor, while you're online, check out all of the other great shows that are seen exclusively right here on Vegas Video Network. Also, also, some good news. We have got a new way for you to get a hold of us. We've got a new toll-free line for you, 866-966-4596. It's on the screen for you, so write it down. Give us a call. Doesn't cost you a dime. That's another way they could get a hold of me or you. Also, something very, very exciting we alluded to over the last couple of weeks on the show. We've got a new strategic partner here on the Vegas Video Network called AM1400 KSHP. What we're going to do starting this Friday night, we've got a feature that we're calling Friday Night Features. And what it is, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m., KSHP, KSHP AM 1400 is going to re-air all of the shows on the radio. So, of course, that's just going to be the audio version. So in case you miss any of the shows here on the Vegas Video Network, go to AM 1400 KSHP, uh, Friday night, 6 to 11. Friday night features, very, very cool. cool. So we want to welcome them aboard as a new strategic uh, partner. Always, Golfer's Guide. You go to the website, lasvegasgolfersguide.com. They're also a strategic partner uh, with us, and I'm sure you're familiar with this uh, publication. Largest one in uh in the country, it's regionally done for golf courses and uh, instruction articles all around the country, and they're kind enough to stream our show as well on their homepage. So thank you very much, Golfer's Guide, LasVegasGolfer'sGuide.com. 
Com. All right, four-letter word for tonight is mind, okay? Let me tell you why it's mind. When you play golf, okay, you have to keep an open mind. Right, Doc? Absolutely. You have to keep an open mind. Our guest tonight, obviously, is an expert in the mind of the game when it comes to playing golf, okay? And then when you're on the golf course, you kind of have to mind your P's and Q's. And of course, that gets into etiquette. And of course, you're going to be out of your mind if you miss the show tonight. Because it's going to be, by the way, I would love somebody to call in or email me. You know the old saying, you have to mind your P's and Q's? Yeah. How did they come up with the letter P and the, and the letter Q? Why not mind your T and O's, or your B and D's? Isn't that a great question? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I'm, I'm glad you didn't select some uh, particular other letters, though. So yeah, good enough. all right. But if somebody has the answer to that, please send me an email or, or, or call in live chat or our new uh, 866 number and let me know that. All right, time to get to our first segment for our new viewers. In case you don't know what that is, that's simply something we call Tournament Scorecard. <laughs> All right, band's taking a break, so uh, they're going to be back in a minute. All right, journeyman Harrison Frazier, who's going to be 40, Doc, in July next month, wins the St. Jude Classic in a playoff over Robert Carlson, who, who lost in a playoff uh, last year. Right. Uh, but Harrison wins his first PGA Tour event, like in something like 350 starts. Right. And, uh, of course, he's playing on a major medical and he got to the point, Doc, as you know, that if he didn't do anything through the major medical, has to win so much money, he was going to give up playing professional golf and get a job, as he has kind of part-time already, staying in the golf industry, I think, putting together tournaments and so on and so forth. Uh, let me just briefly, let me tell you what this did for Harrison. On the money list, he moved from 172nd to 41st with $1.142 million. That'll make you feel a whole lot better. Yep. Uh, FedEx Cup points, he moved from 178th to 40th with 587 points, good for the end of the year. World ranking points, always important, went from oblivion, went from the ether, number 583rd, moved all the way to 144. So obviously a big, big jump. A guy that's almost 40 years old, been out there for 15 years or whatever, gets his first win. Got to ask you, what's it do to him mentally? To get that first one? What does that do Absolutely. To him? What's oh. this do to him mentally uh, uh, playing golf for the rest of the year? Well, he's safe for two years, obviously, but how does this give him a boost? Yeah, well, uh, certainly his confidence is, is going to skyrocket at this point now, and, and that's something that's going to be very, very helpful to him. But I think that, you know, I, I watched one of the uh, interviews with him uh, during the tournament, and he was talking about, you know, kind of keeping his head in the right place and not being too concerned about how anybody else is playing. And for a guy who was thinking about giving up the sport not too long ago, you know, he just really seemed to have a good attitude about what he was doing, what he needed to do during this particular tournament here, what he needed to focus on. And I think that he still had the confidence to actually be able to win. He may not have gone out and predicted that he was going to win, but I think that he had the confidence to do it. Especially, you take a look at the, 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 his, his uh, last hole in regulation there, right. where he pulled that, the approach shot into the water, right. and yet he was able to bounce back from that. You've got to be tough to be able to do that. Well, Doc, let me ask you. You always hear people say they get their first win. Boy, this is a, a, a big boost in confidence, uh, you know, which it is to some degree. But I still argue the point, you still have to go out and perform physically. Uh, well, absolutely. But still, I mean, the confidence is a very, very important part of that. And, and obviously, you need to have the physical skills. You can have all the confidence in the world. If you don't have the physical skills, you're going to be in trouble. But you, you, even before you ever get that first win, you want to have that very strong, powerful level of confidence. Yeah. And you do that by choosing how you think about things. Uh, success causes confidence, no doubt but confidence will lead to success. Absolutely, and I agree with you. So congratulations to uh, Harrison Frazier. And this guy coming out of college, you know, uh, room with Justin Leonard, was, was touted to be a very, very good player. 
and obviously uh, had not performed up to his expectations. And I think it was either last year or the year before, Doc, uh, he was a low qualifier when he went back to Q school and just, and just lit it up. Uh -huh. I mean, he was so deep under par, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. So hopefully this is uh, going to be a real nice, I know it's going to be a nice 40th birthday uh, present for him, and, and it will be the start of uh, you know, of a few more wins to come before right. before he winds down his career. All right, I'll tell you what, we're gonna step away, take a short break, a short station ID, but before that, Scott, what do you say we play the new promo that we're airing and KSHP AM 1400 is gonna air on Friday night features. We'll hear that, we'll take a short station ID, and then we'll come back with our next segment. Yes, who's coming to AM 1400 KSHP? It's all the great shows from the Vegas Video Network. Join us beginning on Friday, June 17th from 6 to 10 p.m. to get the best insider news and expert views about entertainment and comedy, cocktails and fine dining, living in Las Vegas, the real estate market, golf, and sports betting. Visit VegasVideoNetwork.com and KSHP.com for more information and join us on Fridays from 6 to 10 p.m. for the Vegas Video Network Friday Night Features. This is David Ivey from Pub Crawl. It's funny because this is David. From, you should, you should, no, you should just leave it on. Hi, I'm David Ivey from Pub Crawl, and you're watching the Vegas Video Network. And scene. All right, welcome back, everybody, to Golf and Other Four-Letter Words. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers, along with my special guest tonight, Dr. Uh, Kevin Roby. Now a fun, fun segment, again, for our new viewers. Uh, you're going to get a kick out of this, one of my favorites. We call it birdies or bogeys. Doc, I'm going to okay. give you a little bit of gossip or some uh, uh, rumors or some latest news that's going on on tour. want you to give me your slant on it and tell me whether you think it's a birdie or a bogey. Okay. All right, here we go. Uh, rumors starting to circulate that Tiger Woods may indeed need a uh, knee transplant. And if so, Tiger may just give up the game entirely. What's your take? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to call that a bogey just because it would, it would be bad news. Don't want to hear that. Don't, don't want to think about that. Um, can't imagine that he would just give it up without giving the knee transplant or knee, you know, artificial knee a, a shot, but uh, I certainly hope it doesn't come to that. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously the problems he's having with his Achilles and with his knees, and, uh, you know, this is going to be something that's going to stay with him, obviously, uh, uh, and has stayed with him for a while. And if it gets to the point, the doctors, some doctors are speculating uh, where he's in enough pain and says, you know, I don't want to play uh, any more in this kind of pain. He might have to have a knee transplant. And, and you know, Tiger, if he's not playing the kind of golf that he wants to play, is capable of playing, uh, he just may throw in the towel and say, it's not a, you know, I don't have my A game. I'll never have my A game anymore. And uh, he may do it. So it's going to be interesting knowing Tiger Woods. He's the kind of guy that just may do that. All right, I see uh, Scott already. We've got a chat question. Yeah, do you think that uh, all these physical problems with Tiger are happening because he's just not playing well? Are these, you know, are these, is he creating these himself, um, or do you really think he's physically hurt? Yeah, I think he's physically hurt. I think he's very, very physically hurt. And, and uh, you know, your emotional state certainly has an impact on how well you deal with injury and pain and so forth. So that's probably paying, uh, or playing a, a role there too, but I don't think there's any doubt that, that you know, he's seriously hurt. Yeah, he's, he's got to get healthy and he's got to take the time to, to get over this stuff, to, to mend it, to do therapy or whatever. I mean, they're taking pictures of him walking around in, in a brace, and, yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's, it's not that. You're right, as far as his game, he's, he's got to get healthy. All right, 55-year-old Fred Funk. Uh, who qualified to play in the U.S. Open uh, starting tomorrow, by the way, which is, which is great for uh, Fred Funk, says that the game has been taken over by technology, evidenced by the fact that they're playing a 7,500-yard golf course. He says you've got to slow down the ball. 
Uh, I, I, let's see. I'd say that that's a bogey too. I agree. Um, yeah, I, 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 the technology is out there. It's available to everybody. Uh, if you have the body to, to you know, utilize the technology properly, hey, good for you. And, and you know, if you're struggling a bit, if you're not as healthy as you used to be, not as young as you used to be, you know, it's going to be more difficult. But it's, you know, everything is available to everybody out there. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and I agree with you. Don't forget, you know, as I mentioned, Fred Funk, 55 years old, one of the shortest hitters on tour. Of course, he's going to have a few complaints, you know, on playing a 7,500-yard uh, golf course. And I don't blame him. Doesn't mean you can't do it. Look, he won the tour championship a, a number of years ago, and that's not exactly a pitch and putt. Right. So it's going to be interesting. And congratulations for making the cut, you know, making Absolutely. it through qualifying. Uh, see if he can make the cut uh, in the U.S. Open. All right, Doc, here's a, here's a case about being all about money. Okay, the season-ending tour championship is getting a new name. It's going to be known as the tour championship by Coca-Cola with a new logo that reflects a Coke bottle. What's your slant on that? Uh, I, I don't have any problem with that. Um, you know, I mean, if, if, if the tour is willing to do that, um, if it's going to bring more money in, into the tour, into the purses, uh, if it's going to uh, generate some additional uh, interest in what's going on, I think it's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I, yeah, I, I agree with you. And, you know, with the economy uh, uh, of golf today, which is, uh, you know, a little on the soft side to say the least, Coca-Cola has been throwing a lot of money in this tournament for years. And if they're stepping up to the plate and giving them even more or extending the sponsorship, I don't have a problem with it either. They're paying for it. You know, they could pretty much do uh, pretty much do what they want because they're you know they're a huge part of uh, the Atlanta area where this thing is held every year anyway. All right, on June 18th, uh, which is a day after my birthday, by the way. It's all right. Just you could you could send in cards, whatever. Uh, the day before the 2011 uh, U.S. Open champion is crowned, President Obama and Speaker John Boehner are going to play golf together, sharing the same golf cart in the hopes of maybe hashing out a few policy difference. Get real. What do you think? Oh, let's call that a birdie. <laughs> yeah, I, if, if that happens. Well, yeah. I mean, let's, let's uh, give him a chance to sit on there, uh, chair the cart, play the, play the uh, game of golf, yeah. enjoy themselves, relax a little bit. And if nothing else, maybe, you know, get a little bit of warm and fuzzy feeling. Yeah, I, I agree with that. You know, Boehner's a fairly good golfer. You know, purportedly, he's an eight or nine uh, handicap, but he's a pretty good player. And uh, President Obama, you know, sucks. He, you know, he's a hack. Uh, he's a left-hander, doesn't mean any, but, you know, he just enjoys playing the game. So, yeah, it'd be nice for them to get together and, and uh, see, see who buys the drinks. Was, you was know. that political commentary or was that about his golf game? That was about his golf game. That was about his golf game. All right, that was... Uh, birdies and bogeys. Well done, Doc. All right, now we go to a segment uh, that's going to help you, hopefully. It's going to help me get better in our golf game, especially about thinking, you know, around the golf course and some of the things we need to do. And uh, we call this little segment Handicap Helper. All right, welcome back. Golf and other four-letter words. I'm your host, Dennis Silvers, with our guest tonight, Dr. Kevin Roby. Don't forget to go, Vegas golfer, uh, Vegas Network, <laughs> Vegas what golfer. I, I don't know. I'm just so, that's why I have the doc that's on, because I'm just, you know, Vegas. <laughs> it's live TV. VegasVideoNetwork.com. Go on there, live chat. Uh, send us your, uh, your questions for myself uh, or primarily for the doctor, okay? That's why you need help. I've got, I've got this mental thing going on. All right. Uh, Doc Joanne says that even though she's been playing golf for a few years, she still gets intimidated when she gets paired with men. You know, that's a pretty common thing. I mean, whether it's a woman getting paired up with men, whether it's um, an amateur getting paired up with a professional, uh, it's easy to feel intimidated. The important thing here is to recognize that intimidation doesn't come from the other person that you're playing with. It comes from your own thoughts, your own feelings, your own insecurities. 
So if you recognize that you're the source of, of those feelings of intimidation, you can start to change that. I mean, talk to yourself in a more appropriate way. I mean, this, that, you know, this guy, it doesn't matter what they think, you know, uh, how good of a golfer they am. Right. I paid my greens fees. Sure. I'm not here to have a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's well said. And she's been playing apparently for a few years, yeah. so it's not as if it's a you know it's a first time thing. So, all right, good advice, Joanne. Norris wants help getting rid of all the swing thoughts he has when he's getting ready to hit a shot. That's a that's a good one because I've I've got the same problem, Norris. Yeah, that's a real good question. And one of the things that I encourage golfers to do is to, when they're actually getting ready to hit the ball, is to not have any particular swing thoughts. It's certainly no instruction about what to do. Go through a good pre-shot routine, set up a good mental and physical template for the shot that you want to hit. But when it's time to hit that ball, simply allow yourself to swing. No concerns about where the ball is going, uh, no instruction, just allow yourself to hit the ball. To hit it. To hit it. All right, got a live chat question for you, Doc. Yeah, any tips on how to uh, block out the kibitzing you get from the people you're golfing with if they're giving you some, you know, some crap before you you uh, you hit your shot? Any way to kind of block that out? Uh, to block out the what? The, the you know, they're, they're, they're you're, you're, you're playing with a bunch yeah. of friends and they're yeah. kind of yeah. needling you a little bit. Yeah. Um, what you want to do under those types of circumstances there is you want to remind yourself what's relevant for this particular shot here. What is my goal? What do I want to do? What do I want to, want to accomplish? There's going to be, if you, you can look for distractions all over the place. It can be your buddies talking. It can be the chains jingling in the pocket. It can be the mockingbird singing. You know, if you're going to choose to put your attention on those things, you're probably not going to hit a good shot. Choose to focus your attention where it needs to be on what's relevant for this shot. Yeah, that's good advice. I know the guys uh, I play with uh, have a little habit to get out an air horn every <laughs> once in a while. And, uh, I go, what'd you say? What'd you say? But uh, good advice. Robert wants to know, doctor, what's the difference? This is a good question, too. What's the difference between a swing thought and a swing trigger? Good question, Robert. You know, I, I don't really know. Uh, probably different people use, use those terms interchangeably. Um, I agree. You know, at, at, when you're getting ready to hit that shot, there's nothing wrong. I like to encourage people to have one thought, and I like to use the word perfect, which means they've gone through a, a good pre-shot routine. They are ready to hit the shot. Everything that they've done is perfect. It's, it's prepared them perfectly. So that's my swing cue, my swing thought, whatever it happens to swing trigger, you know, perfect. And then again, you allow yourself to simply hit the shot. To hit it. Yeah, I think they are interchangeable. I agree with you, Dr. Swing trigger, swing thought. All we know is you can get rid of them before you, <laughs> before you, you take your you back swing. You don't want a whole lot of them. Yeah, because I got like 30 in my head, you know. All right, this is a good one, too. Andy, like so many people who play golf, has a fear about having to hit over water. Uh -huh. Yeah, join the club, Andy. Any suggestions? Well, you know, one of the things is, is you want to take a look at, at, at that fear. When, when you're standing over a shot, getting ready to hit a shot, and you're afraid of what might happen, all right, that's where all of your attention is being drawn to. You're thinking about avoiding something in particular, the water. You never want to hit a shot where the idea is about avoiding something. You always want to be drawn towards something. You always want to be approaching something. Pick out an appropriate target. Think about sending the ball toward the target. Don't sit there and think about trying to avoid something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, and it, it, there's a, and you've heard this a million times too. And I think it already uh, kind of plants a bad thing in your head, where people that uh, will play a hole where they know they have to uh, uh, hit their shot, you know, uh, over the water to the green or something, will play that hole with an old ball. I'm sure you. But that, doesn't that immediately set you up really for a super negative? Because you're admitting that you're probably going to lose this ball into the water. Yeah, well, I have this technique that, that I utilize when I've got a difficult shot like that. And, and this technique, it makes sure that I never have concerns about putting my ball in the water. And what the technique is, is that I go into the cart, I take one of my partner's balls and tee it <laughs> I like that. Very, very good. That's, uh, that's good. All right, Andy, there you go. Uh, Brian wants an exercise or a thought to help him relax more on the golf course because his anxiety is self-induced. Mm -hmm. You know, again, join the club, Brian. 
Well, it'd be nice to talk with Brian and, and get a little bit uh, better idea what he's talking about here. But one of the things that often happens in golf is that people, they, they try to maintain very high, intense levels of concentration throughout the entire round. Uh, they start con being concerned about what might happen, what mm -hmm. might not happen, and so forth. And so a part of it is, is in between shots, you know, kind of getting away from golf or, or just joking with your buddies, talking about other things, just kind of letting it go. And then, you know, when you're getting ready to hit a shot, again, being fully committed to it, recognize you can't control the outcome, but, you know, stepping up to it, hitting it, whatever happens, happens. Happens, yeah. It, you know, you'll say it is what it is. Finally, Peter is thinking about getting hypnosis to help his game. Good or bad idea? And uh, by the way, are you into hypnosis? No, I've used hypnosis okay. in the past in, in a variety of different types of settings. Some clinical, um, kind of used some with, with some athletes earlier. I don't think it's a, a good or bad thing. I, it can be very, very helpful for some people. It depends, you know, kind of upon your attitude toward it. Depends on the, the skill, the hypnotist. Some people find that it's very, very helpful. Uh, I personally don't don't utilize it. Don't oh, yeah. I would wonder uh, what would happen if you put somebody under, and you sent him out to play golf that way. Has that has that ever been done? Well, I think that probably what or happens any is studies on it, or I don't, I don't know or about anything. Studies. But I, I, I think the person, you know, kind of gets themselves into a trance state rather than you know somebody inducing it for them. Uh, and you know, hypnosis is really it's simply a combination of intense focus yeah. and relaxation. Yeah. And they and they say that it's kind of the zone, isn't it? When you know, people are yeah. in the zone. Uh, it's almost kind of like a hypnotic type uh, right, feeling. Right, right. Yeah. And we've all had that experience at some time or another. It may not have been on the golf course, but where we were so intently yeah. focused on what was going on right. that we lost track of yeah. what else was going on. The only zone on that, that I get close to is the ESPN zone right down <laughs> you know, on the strip here in uh, Las Vegas. One more live chat question, Scott. Yeah, can you name a pro golfer who has gone and seen a sports psychologist and then got measurably better? Oh, you know, I don't know that I can do that, but I'll tell you this, that, that many, many of the top golfers, and even those that aren't the top golfers, utilize sports psychologists. Um, it is an additional tool in your bag. Um, if you want to be the best golfer you can, you want to have specific sports mental skills training, it may make a small difference in your game or in your competition. Yeah. But especially when you're at that top level of competition, you want to give yourself every absolute advantage that you can. But if you look at Retief Goosen, Tiger Woods has worked with the sports sure. psychologist, Justin Leonard, uh, Padraig Harrington, sure. almost all the top golfers Absolutely. Have. Absolutely. Why not? They, along with the nutritionists and, you know, the, the workout guys and, and everything, they, they have a whole uh, thing. All right, we got this week coming up on the PGA Tour, a little tournament called the U.S. Open Championship. Uh, at Congressional Country Club, the Blue Course, and of course that's in Bethesda, Maryland. LPGA Tour is quiet, no event going on. Champions Tour, no event going on. Nationwide Tour, they've got the uh, Preferred Health Systems, uh, Wichita Open, and that's in Kansas, of course. European Tour has the St. Omer Open, and that is in St. Omer, France, of course. So, But everybody's going to be glued on... Uh, the U.S. Open, uh, obviously. Doctor, real quickly, how can people uh, get a hold of you? We want to put out your uh, your website address and any other information sure. if they uh, are having a problem and, and need a some help. Absolutely. Like myself. <laughs> I'll be expecting a call. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> and you'll be getting one, yeah. The website uh, is uh, drkevinroby.com. That's D-R-K-E-V-I-N-R-O-B-Y.com. My phone number is 395-2170, area code 702. Uh, check out the website. A lot of free information there, articles and, and uh, audios and, and so forth. If nothing else, a lot of good free information. And I know you give a lot of uh, seminars. Next one you're given. when's that coming up? I've got one coming up at uh, UNLV. That'll be, I think it's October 8th. And, uh, yeah, just check the uh, continuing education catalog. It should be out uh, fairly soon. And, and real quickly, last question, does a person's uh, personality have anything to do with how well they engage uh, the mental part of the game? Yes. Um, almost every client that I've ever worked with has found our collaboration to be successful. But there, was, there have been one or two people that, when they came into this, uh, 
I don't think that they really were interested in finding out what, what they could do with this. They kind of had their mind made up about things. Uh, one guy that, that comes to mind uh, years ago was very, very wealthy, uh, talked about firing a number of coaches, mm -hmm. and I think he kind of came to me with the objective of firing me, which he did. Wow, really? <laughs> Interesting. And I won't fire you, okay. I promise. All right, All right, Doc, great job. Hey, thanks, Dennis. Great Appreciate job. It. You're welcome back uh, anytime. Hope uh, Doctor's Information uh, helped all of you that sent your emails in. And, and don't forget our new uh, toll-free number. Want to hear from you uh, next week. And again, don't forget, Friday Night Features, AM 1400, KSHP. From 6 to 11 o'clock, you'll hear a re-air of all the shows right here on the Vegas Video Network. Until then, thanks for hanging with us, everybody. Fairways and Greens, we'll see you right back here next week. Same place, same time, with another great show. So long, everybody.